Inside Popsicle News. I'm here with Ryan Atkins, winner of today's Savage Race in Pennsylvania. And it's a miserable, miserable day. We're under a tent here. You can kind of see some of the rain and the umbrellas out there. It's kind of cold, so we're covered up, but uh, we're tough. You know, we can handle it. So tell me, uh, how did the race unfold for you today? Uh, the race went pretty well. There's some guy who just went buck wild off the start for the first <laughs> 600 meters. He was running like I could not stay with him, and then he died pretty quick. And then it was me and um, me and Jordan McDougal, an ultra runner guy, and we were kind of just running together. We had maybe like a minute and a half gap on the rest of the field after about two and a half K. And then we took kind of a wrong turn. There was uh, this blue tape out there on like a part of the paintball field and we that were told to keep the blue tape on our left. So we just started going with the blue tape on our left and it took us in a big circle. And then we ended up back on the course like four or 500 meters, you know, back and like kind of in the middle of the pack. So at that point I just kind of was like, all right, <laughs> I've got to, I've got to go hard because I, I didn't know how far back I was, so I just ran as hard as I could for like the next 15 minutes, and I caught everybody back up. Yeah. I mean, when we, I was out there on the course doing some filming, and and we, uh, Adrian and I were out there, and we came up to the castle, and these guys started running through, and we're like, okay, where's Ryan? This is weird. Something's wrong. Okay. And then Lindsay came through, and we're like, okay, something's really the wrong. <laughs> And uh, and then when you finally came out and get and went through the kind of traverse rock wall thing, um, I just saw you from behind, and I, there was like a whole another afterburner going on there. <laughs> like you totally took off. Yeah, yeah, I definitely had to. I didn't know how far behind I was, so I just ran until I caught first place, and then I kind of backed off. <laughs> yeah. So were there any obstacles out there? I mean, with all the rain and the slipperiness and stuff like that, was there anything that kind of tripped you up out there? Um. No, not really. Uh, I really enjoyed the the terrain out there. It was really rocky, rooty, bit of mud in there. So I, I love that kind of stuff. So that was right up in my alley. But no, all the obstacles were good. Um, the rain didn't seem to affect them that much. So it was yeah, it was good. Awesome. How about the uh, Wheel World, that kind of new one that they put out there? Yeah, I was super apprehensive coming into Wheel World because I just never done an obstacle like that. But I took my time and just kind of made sure I grabbed and spun and. Yeah, it was really cool. You kind of spun one way and then spun the next way and just kind of went with the flow. It was it was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, watching you, you kind of made it look a little easy. So I, I was <laughs> I, I'm like still apprehensive myself because I'm gonna go run this <laughs> afternoon. But but yeah, you you um, it seemed a little shorter than than maybe I was thinking from the pictures and stuff yeah. like that. But yeah, you you went straight through it. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, it was good. So. Um, so I haven't seen you since New Jersey, and since then you've been to uh, Breckenridge. Tell me a little bit about the Breckenridge race. You got third place there to Hobie and uh, Cody. So how was the altitude and stuff? Like what happened? How did you manage uh, third place with no altitude training? And, and what kind of put them ahead of you? Um, well, I know... No, it's not like it's not gonna sound like an excuse, but I know Cody and Hobie both live at around four or five thousand feet in Utah, so going up from five thousand to nine thousand is a lot different than me going from, you know, basically sea level up to nine or ten thousand. But um, yeah, I, I've raced at altitude before, mountain biking and mountain running and stuff, and I know that if you go too deep in that red zone, it's just so hard to come back from it. And I think that's what a lot of people racing did, and I just made sure to kind of stick into that you know 75 to 80 percent effort range and just kind of sit there and then sure enough as the race progressed I came from seventh sixth fifth fourth third yeah. and then um, missed the spear but so did everybody so yeah yeah so it was, a, it was a good race it was a good kind of test and it was a lot of fun well it seemed like a pretty stacked field kind of like a mini yeah. like mid-summer world championship kind of race yeah, totally. and uh now, did you show up a little early for, for the altitude, or did you just decide, like, I'm just going to show up and run? No, we drove out there, basically. We left three days before the race, and it's a two-day drive, so got there the day before. Yeah. Had to sleep and raced, so, yeah, it's kind of last minute, but that's how it worked out. Nice, and then did you get to hang around um, Colorado at all and run some mountains? Yeah, I was out there for about two weeks. I jumped on a plane and headed back to... 
uh, New Jersey for the Battle Frog last weekend, but then I got right back out again, spent another few days. So, yeah, it was awesome. It was fun to just be out there camping and running and hiking and doing all the good yeah. stuff. Living the life. How was um, how was the New Jersey Battle Frog? You won that one as well? Yeah, the New Jersey Battle Frog was, it was really cool. I, I don't know, I finished the race and I just felt like it was a really good race. I, I don't know, it's kind of hard to d describe, but I just I feel like the way the obstacles kind of stacked up, like they had this really long jerry carry and then like, boom, right after that they had um, the Tyrolean, which is pretty long and like stuff like that. Or also like right off the start, there was a like really long wreck bag carry half a mile up and down the um, up and down the motocross track and then boom right after that was the platinum rig and then another big cargo climb so it was just like things like that that kind of like hit you bam 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 and then they did that a couple times in the course and we did two laps of that so it was like these really cool sequences and I was just I was just loving that cool and now that was at the English Town racetrack same as yeah. your first world's toughest mutter win yeah, exactly. and so was that kind of like nostalgic for you to be back there yeah totally yeah it was kind of and it's funny because it was a five mile course for world's toughest and the battle frogs are about five mile course that we run twice so it's kind of yeah a lot of similarities which is kind of cool did you think to yourself maybe i should just do this like 20 times and then i'll be ready yeah 18 more laps and then i'll be set <laughs> <laughs> but now, was the Battle Frog compared to World's Toughest Mudder like a little more obstacle heavy, or or is it more comparable? Yeah, it's definitely. I don't know. The obstacles are different. Like, especially with the World's Toughest Mudder in 2013, there, like they've got lots of tubes that you crawl through and like kind of mud puddles that you go through. Whereas Battle Frog is more like technical obstacles, yeah. so um, they kind of take more out of you, but you can get through them a bit faster. So. A bit different, but yeah, doing that battle frog course for 24 hours would be uh, <laughs> would be brutal. <laughs> and compared to like Savage here, um, do they? I mean, there was I saw a log carry out there. Were there any other kind of strength type obstacles? No, there is only yeah, there's only one pretty short light log carry here. It was like a a three by four kind of beam that was maybe three and a half feet long. So probably only weighed 20 pounds, and the carry was only maybe 100 yards so okay. it wasn't very substantial yeah i was kind of trying to follow you through that maze of of um of giant crates uh or like shipping containers yeah. and i like totally got turned around and then you came around another corner and i was like wait and uh and then all of a sudden you were at the other obstacles and yeah. so i almost lost track of you but i did catch some of the you know the final colossus and stuff yeah, like yeah. that so what did you think of some of the, some of those more fun obstacles uh they're great. I mean, I, <laughs> I love them. I love, I love obstacles. I love just going over them, figuring them out. And this is my second Savage Race now, so I kind of have a bit better feel for the obstacles and kind of what they're like. Yeah. Um, so it's less of a shock, less of a kind of figuring out process. But yeah, it's still really fun. And like I said, only my second Savage Race, so everything's still kind of shiny and new when I come to one of these. Well, congrats again on your big win today, and uh, we'll see you again soon, all right? Thanks, Joel. Thanks. <laughs>